Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Anton Kaplanian may not be a name that you're familiar with if you're not deep in the field of computer graphics. It's not a name such as, say, Lisa Su or Raja Kadori. But the individual I just mentioned has been extremely influential for the tech that you're using today, especially if you own an NVIDIA graphics card. He helped pioneer denoising algorithms for NVIDIA's RTX technology and also helped with things such as DLSS as well. But yeah, he left NVIDIA back in 2017 and most recently has been doing a stint over at Facebook. Well, I say most recently because that's not quite accurate now. He's now moved over to Intel where he's working in the field of course of computer graphics research. Now, Intel and their journey for computer graphics is a long one. Obviously, they have been producing iGPUs for a myriad of their own processors for a number of generations now, but it's certainly not been anywhere near competitive to, let's say, a high-end video or AMD product. But DG2, or HPG, for gaming is going to be an interesting product when it finally launches, and they also have server parts as well, of course, for high-performance computing, but it isn't just the architecture itself which needs to impress. Sure, good power consumption, high frame rates in games are great and all, but if the drivers crash or, I don't know, there's other features missing, it's going to be very hard to convince people. When it comes to NVIDIA, for example, they have a very robust feature set. And AMD too, in fact, FSR is arguably anyway, at least in my opinion, one of the most important releases that AMD have made in a good number of years. Sure, it has weaknesses compared to DLSS, but it's not meant, strictly speaking, to be a DLSS competitor. Instead, it's meant to be its own thing. You know, it's a bit like saying, well, you can take a boat, but you could also take a plane. They are rather different in their methods of travel, but ultimately they have their positives and weaknesses. And that's a bit like FSR and DLSS. I guess my point is anyway, <laughs> that AMD are, you know, kind of catching up a lot with NVIDIA in the ecosystem, but NVIDIA in gaming have um, technology like DLSS and um, obviously ray tracing, which they've been really pushing. But ultimately, it's server-related products such as CUDA, which has really been kind of the thing that AMD have been super struggling against. So the question is, Anton Kaplanian, now working at Intel, uh, by the way, full credit to WCCF Tech for this discovery, I'll link that article in the video description, has a ton of ramifications across the industry, and is a great sign that Intel are going to be competitive on numerous fronts. Now, I don't know the state of the projects he's working on in terms of how complete they are, or whether even close to completion. He could be researching something entirely new, or he could be originally work, or so he could uh, be first working on a project which is quite close to completion. Now, Raja Kadori has publicly stated on Twitter that he would be quite happy to work with AMD and perhaps even push FSR, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they won't work on their own upsampling tech. Or perhaps we could see advancements in uh, Intel's um, handling of hardware-based ray tracing. We know, well, I say we know in the loosest possible sense, it's been, again, teased by Raja Kodori that hardware-based ray tracing is supported by DG2 and onwards. And just given the time frame of the release, which is almost certainly going to be late this year, or is probably looking like it might even be early next year, yeah, I, 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 I'm sure you'll agree that supporting hardware-based ray tracing, variable rate shading, and all of the other features that you would come to expect in a modern GPU is, well, I guess just expected. So, yeah, I'm going to be very interested to see how Intel actually do here. I kind of have a lot of hope on them, simply because they are a third player. Um, I don't think anyone really took, you know, 3D effects coming back seriously, or well, at least I hope people weren't, you know, taking it seriously. And the, the, the problem is, ultimately, even if you have a group of investors, they have to have extremely deep pockets because, you know, Intel, AMD, well, okay, not so much Intel, 
uh, at the moment anyway, but Nvidia and AMD, just to get to the state they are, especially Nvidia, they've spent billions upon billions upon billions and God knows how many thousands of hours just researching a single specific thing. So this stuff, you know, it doesn't come cheaply. And I think Intel, you know, they've got a good chance of being competitive. It's whether they can actually do it. And also, while we're on the subject of graphics and Intel, there's something else I wanted to discuss real quick as well. And this is courtesy of Adored TV, so I'll link his video in the, well, description, as you would expect. And this comes down to Arrow Lake. Now, Arrow Lake is going to be the 15th generation of Intel processor. So this is not going to launch most likely until late 2023. But there's something very interesting about this. According to Jim, we are seeing Halo, which is Arrow Lake P. There are six big cores, eight little cores, and 320 execution units, GT3. Furthermore, at least according to what he's confirmed here, we will see Lion Cove for the high performance cores and Skymont for the energy efficient cores. What I find particularly interesting about this is just the fact that Intel are loading up their GPU with so many execution units. And I think this is possibly a great sign of the market in the future for AMD as well. We're hearing that AMD's own APUs in the future are going to have a considerable number of compute units and going to be pretty impressive in terms of performance. I say this with some level of ignorance without, you know, completely knowing the lower performance stack of, let's say, RDNA 3 and certainly RDNA 4. But, you know, personally, I think with the shift to DDR5 and other technology, I wouldn't be surprised if what we consider kind of lower performance class cards now basically just completely disappear. I guess a really easy example of this was, remember when we had like the, the RX 460, 470, 480? I wouldn't be surprised if a card like the 460 or possibly like a GTX 1050 when it was current and you can kind of iterate from there, they might just completely disappear to be honest. And instead, AMD and Intel will continue to push their own solutions. And this is kind of one of the reasons, and this is again speculative, why I think that Nvidia are just so in on ARM at the moment. And obviously the ARM acquisition has just been, <laughs> it's been a bit of a story, let's just be honest. But yeah, it, I just find this uh, a small story I just wanted to cover because I find it so interesting that Intel are gonna be ramming so many execution units into this product. And I wasn't going to cover this story because, quite frankly, Older Lake and all of the specifications are just so well known, but I might as well just throw it in here because, yeah, news of today is just pretty much dead from uh, apart from Intel stuff. There's the RX 6600 XT thing, but I don't really think I can add much that others have really said about it. I mean, it's an okay card, just a bit expensive. What more can you say about it? But yeah, the 12700K has appeared in this Isof Sandra database. And this is just a quick one because again, we kind of know a lot about Alder Lake anyway. It's being spotted as a 12 core, 20 thread processor, 25 megabytes of L3 cache. And um, I will link the uh, database entry as well as a couple of tweets. One is from Momomo. So it seems like this is a 12 core, 20 thread part. Um, and honestly, in terms of benchmarks and performance, obviously it's really early days yet. So I wouldn't put too much stock in that, but it pretty much just at this point confirms the configuration of the part. But with that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video. And in case you're wondering, the Intel HPG uh, t-shirt has actually been sent over from Intel Graphics. And I, I promise you guys, it's just a complete coincidence with the coverage of the video today. I um, was actually using this t-shirt in another video so you guys are not going to be seeing that video today. You're going to be seeing that in like a day or two. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of wearing this t-shirt and it just, as I was doing the rounds, it's like, okay, this is looking like it's going to be an Intel video then. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know if you guys remember, but back in March of 2019, I was at the Intel Odyssey event. And yeah, so now they've kind of been sending over stuff. So 
I am genuinely interested to see what Intel can do. This is not a sponsored video or segment or anything like that. I just wanted to disclose that they did send over a t-shirt because I, I want to disclose that stuff. They've also sent over a hoodie, but it's really warm at the moment. I'm having to record this video with my air conditioner off and screw recording with a hoodie, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, I did want to disclose that because I feel more comfortable just letting you guys know. And um yeah, I'm genuinely interested to see what actually happens with Intel going forward in graphics. I, I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't want to think that they're going to just, you know, destroy NVIDIA and make NVIDIA think twice about everything. I don't think it's going to be like that. I genuinely think that the first generation products is going to be pretty decent. I guess we'll see, won't we? So yeah, I think just the third player is going to be very important going forward and if nothing else, it will help push the tech forward. So I think that's just about it for this particular video. If you've enjoyed it, then of course, click the likey button because it's the land of YouTube. And also comment down below, do you think we're going to see innovations from Intel in something like a DLSS competitor? Do you feel they'll be more open source, like say what we're seeing from AMD? Or do you think that Anton will be working on something entirely different? Maybe he'll be creating a machine learning algorithm for the optimal way to grow a turnip. Who knows? Intel inside powered by a turnip. You don't know. I'm just saying. Maybe. With that said, thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye.